a lot of snow here, guys. Hopefully I don't get in trouble. That is a lot of snow. The brakes are fine, they're a little bit touchy. I still do have a lot of traction, but you know, I'm not really supposed to drive fast on a mountain road and with snow around. Hopefully downhill there's going to be less snow. It understeers just a tiny bit, but that's probably because I'm... there's some... Right, folks, we are in Virginia mountains. It's a beautiful mountain road. The reason we are here is to give it a real test to the Mustang EcoBoost. I drove the Camaro V6, and honestly, it surprised me a lot. So now it's turn to the Mustang EcoBoost to see uh, what it's like to drive. Oh, okay. <laughs> gotta be careful it's a little bit snowy it's a little bit wet so it might be tricky i'm in sport mode uh there's track mode there's sport plus mode but i'm gonna keep it in sport as i don't see a difference between sport and sport plus other than enhanced uh fake engine noise yes if you don't have a v8 the best thing you can do according to Ford is to pump fake V8 noise into a four-cylinder car, but that's okay. I'm still using the automatic transmission. Surprisingly, it actually does better. It's tuned a lot better than it was in uh, the Mustang GT. It's, I believe it might be the same 10-speed transmission. But I might be wrong, I'll have to check it out. Oh, oh, oh. Yes. Okay, that's a sharp turn. Woo! Yeah, it likes to go sideways. Surprisingly. But that might be due to the fact that I'm on a pretty slippery road. It feels soft, honestly. There's a lot of rubber right here. I think the sidewall thickness is about 50. I'll have to double check. Uh, but the thing is that Camaro... Uh, Camaro, even on the same tire, was a lot more tight a lot more nimble and stiff. Okay. Yeah, the automatic transmission actually does a pretty good job. I'm, I'm surprised. Uh, once you switch to uh, Sport or Sport Plus, it's not going to engage all 10 gears. It's going to give you like 6-7 gears to play with. And that's going to be it. That said, I'm gonna switch to medium. Okay, let's see how it does. It responds pretty quickly. I'm I'm very surprised actually because I kind of hated the transmission in the Mustang GT when I had it. beautiful road honestly but because it's winter wow that's so beautiful look at that just look at that love those mountains 
So this video is going to be a little bit more specific and I'm saying that because I've already done a video on the Mustang GT and covered most of the exterior interior stuff. I do like how Mustangs, the current generation Mustang looks overall. It doesn't look as bulky as the previous generation did. As for the interior, surprisingly in these couple of days I had uh, the Mustang EcoBoost. I haven't really heard any, any rattles or cracks. Uh, it seems to be pretty solid, which again, it's not something characteristic to Ford. I will say though that the Camaro's interior feels a lot better. Uh, it's more minimalistic. You don't have that much going on, although I don't like the Camaro's steering wheel. With that said, it does feel well put together. Anyway, speaking about the interior in general, it's a nice place to be in. Uh, compared to Camaro, again, you have a much, much better visibility. And you do appreciate that when you switch between cars. As far as seats, they are pretty tight, actually. I think when I drove the, uh, was the Roush Mustang, I've kind of said that the seats are not that grippy, you know? Now I feel the opposite, that they are pretty, pretty bolstered and probably just got fat. The seats are comfortable and it's actually very nice to see a brown color, which uh, contrasts really well with the the rest of the dark interior and the white color on the exterior so i would say if you have the ability to get a non-black leather then go for it let's move to the main reason of this video and talk about the actual car performance and here you have two ends of the spectrum on one end you have a daily use of the car on the street in the city and then you have the other end of the spectrum which would be having a more spirited drive maybe some mountain roads when you drive the car in the city and you're basically jumping between first uh, let's say three years the engine feels really responsive uh, even more it it for tune this engine so it feels more powerful than it is in reality you have that instant response in like first second maybe even third gear it kind of punches you but all that fades away when you gain more speed because first of all the throttle response being reduced and then the second because it's a turbocharged engine means that it has a lot of low end power but it lacks top end power so the pedal kind of softens up uh, once you gain more speed it just feels a little bit like slushy I don't know transmission wise I have to say that here in the EcoBoost uh, the transmission feels response a lot better than it did in the Mustang GT I had in the past and speaking about driving modes compared to the Mustang GT uh, there is actually a better difference between modes in here Again, there's a bunch of modes you're not going to be using every day. Uh, with that said, if you just put it in the uh, S mode, the throttle response increases, transmission shifts faster, and most important, actually, uh, this one will actually not go above, I think, like seventh gear, which is awesome because when you drive faster or on tighter roads, of course, you don't need that many gears. In my experience, everything the Sport Plus mode does is just to enhance the sound since the four-cylinder engines sound like, well, Ford decided that it's going to pump fake V8 engine noise because this fake noise is different from the one I have in my Ford Focus ST. I would say that it's a better implementation than in my Focus ST because here, once you switch to the Sport Plus mode, the fake noise is on all the time and kind of feels more connected. Whereas in my Focus ST, the fake engine noise will only start at, I don't know, a certain RPM, uh, which is annoying because you can hear the transition. That's what I'm trying to say. From a driver perspective, it doesn't make sense to have so many modes that uh, don't make that huge of a difference, but it does make sense from a marketing standpoint. So whatever. The steering feel is not bad. There's three modes, normal, comfort, and sport. You're going to be better off using the comfort mode all the time, simply because uh, if you put the steering wheel in sport mode, that doesn't give you more feedback. It just gets heavier. Let's talk about ride quality and uh, overall handling. 
and for me personally that's kind of a biggest issue and what i mean by that is that in base trims both uh, gt and ecoboost the cars are very soft they're just made to be cruiser uh, vehicles not sport cars by any means it's way too comfortable and when you compare it to Camaro a base V6 Camaro feels a lot more planted than the EcoBoost Mustang even with having a, about the same sidewall on the tire it feel it still feels a lot more connected and planted on the road this is actually the biggest difference you have to step up with a Mustang you'll have to step up to some handling packages with bigger wheels with better suspension on that mountain road i realized that i had more a lot more confidence when i was behind a camaro than i had uh being behind the wheel of a mustang for me at least camaros just perform a lot better uh, than mustangs before you're moving up the trim all right that's going to be all for today uh thank you all for watching let me know what is your thought on the ecoboost mustang it's a very popular car and i really like it for what it is let me know in the comments how the performance pack feel on either ecoboost mustang or mustang gt and let me know if they're worth it thank you all for watching and i'll see you next time